welcome to my workshop. Today's video's sponsor is Thunder Laser. The next series of videos is sponsored by Thunder Laser, of which there's probably going to be three or four videos. What I'm going to do is start a series of videos on, well, photo engraving on different materials. Now it's not quite as straightforward as you may think and it all starts with, well I haven't got it up there yet, but it starts off with light burn. You can do 90% of your photo setting up in light burn. But the first thing we need to do is to do a process of checking and should we say resetting the scan line offset. In other words, when the laser scans from left to right and then goes down to the next line and goes left to right up and so on, they might not be absolutely dead parallel in line with each other. So I'm going to write a small little program in Lightburn to show you how to do that and we'll check it what I've actually done is set the line offset all back to zero. Okay, so it's going to be slightly off and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, but first we're going to draw a little test card in Lightburn and I'll show you how to use some of the tools in Lightburn. Okay, so we got Lightburn up and the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to this pencil and I'm going to draw a straight line uh, really anywhere on the screen. So from here to a bit approximately, let's make sure that it's sort of parallel to those lines. We're going to select that line. So what I want to do is make this line, let me see. That's way too big, so I just want 50 millimeters. 50.0 and enter. So there we go. That's what we want 50 millimeters. So I'm going to come down here now to these group of boxes uh, and I want to make copies of this. Uh, so I want to make copies down the screen, so that is actually in the Y. X is in this direction, so I'm going to leave that at 1. Uh, total width 50 millimeters, fine. Uh, that's not going to bother us at all. We've got don't, no need to do anything else here, but here we want to make 20 rows. Okay, that's all right. My spacing, two point five millimeters. That's that's fine. So I'm going to press OK and zoom in to see what we got. My mouse is playing up a little. Uh, so I think actually that gives us twenty one lines, but that's okay. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is go to the box, because I'm going to draw a box around this. So come here, it should snap to that, and it snap to that. That is fine. So you might, some of you might get the gist of what I'm doing here, because I want a, a line offset, or I want to see whether the laser is starting and stopping exactly on that line in each direction left to right and right to left and drawing these lines in a box around it so I can accurately see exactly what the laser is doing and then put the scan line offset now I don't know whether the camera is picking that up because it's difficult to see but on there it's got, uh, let me see, 
200, 400, 600, 800 and 1 meter or 1000 millimeters and the scan line offset here that I need to fill out in light burn. So light burn knows the exact offset that this laser requires to be exactly parallel. Okay, so let's set this up now. Um, so it's a line. Let's open this up. Um, let's pick something in the middle. We go. Oh, 200 is fine. So we'll go millimeters per second. We're going to set 200 here. Well, actually, we can go a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more. Let's go. Let's go in the middle of it all. Let's go 400. That's 400 millimeters per second scan lines. Maximum per 20 is probably a little bit too much because uh, we only want to draw a line really so what I'm going to say here is probably 15 would be probably about the maximum of this particular laser anyway it's a 100 watt laser Nova Thunder Laser Nova that is and let me see air assist no we'll have air assist off so that means it's going to be low blowing or low pressure blowing um, line nothing else to change here everything's okay okay so let's press okay so now I'm going to set up a piece of material in the laser and we'll see what happens this is the control system that's actually mounted in the thunder laser uh, it's actually manufactured by Rowida so we're going to press file and there's our file there I'm going to press enter so now that's logged into the controller that this is the file that we're going to work with okay so everything's okay there so now we're going to move to our material so this is the best material I have found to use it's MDF and it's coated with uh, like a white it's not exactly paint it's, it's a coating it's very smooth but it shows up really well on a laser now I've placed it here on the table between these two IR focusing sensors so I'm going to bring the head over now to the material anywhere on the material really and um, we will set the the right focus or in this case the height of the table in relation to the nozzle I'm only bringing the nozzle over so you can see you know sort of how close it is it's about uh, six millimeters off the, the nozzle or should be so we'll bring it over all very quiet isn't it okay so I'll bring you over to the controller now to show you what I'm doing there. Right, I've set it up so you can see the controller and the head and what I'm actually doing. So what I'm going to do is press menu. Now the first thing highlighted in the menu is autofocus. So I'm going to press enter. And it does everything automatically and that is now the perfect focus now the next thing I'm going to do is set the datum point or the start of the program so I'm just going to move this slightly over too far about halfway there and down a little bit so you, you can it's very maneuverable if you press it quickly it moves a you know a millimeter or so so I think you can pick that up yeah you can see what the head's doing as well right so now I'm going to set press origin because I want to do it in that bottom corner there 
So I press Origin and then I can press Frame to make sure that all, every part of what I want to, in this case, engrave those lines onto that material is going to happen on that material. So to make sure, I can press Frame. Okay, I just want it on a little bit further, so up a little bit, over a little bit, repress the origin, press frame, there you go. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do now is press start, but I'll take the camera over to the head to show you what's going on there. I'm just going to run that test again because I think the camera just um, freaked out and uh, didn't focus properly so here we go again I actually did it twice. In actual fact, I did it three times because I did it up here as well. So, the reason why I did that is because I couldn't really believe what I was seeing. Now, I have set a light burn offset to zero. In other words, there is no line offset whatsoever, and yet it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, I can only put that down to the machine being, well, new, um, and it's still sort of running in, I suppose. Uh, everything's still all nice and firm and tight. There's absolutely no wear at all, obviously. And, you know, I would have expected to see each line to be offset slightly either side of that line. That one there in the middle is the only one that appears to be off a little tiny bit, but I it's really not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the speed a lot higher. I'm going to go up to 800 millimeters a second now and um, see what happens there. Okay, this is now at 800 millimeters per second. Um, you would expect it to show a little bit of offset now. So, frame. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's 800 millimeters a second, and well, um, according to this, it doesn't require any scanning offset put in at all. But I'm going to put some in. I'll put the recommended in from Sun Thunder Laser. Uh, I'll bring that card down. You might be able to pick the figures up on that. Not with that light you want. Can you pick that up? It's very difficult to see. Oh, you might see that there. So the, the figures on the right hand side is what I'm going to put into Lightburn and I'll show you how to do that. Scanning offset figures, they're very very small figures adjustments. Now this was tested by the Thunder Laser engineers prior to this leaving the factory and these are the figures that they come up with. I've had them in here before and everything seems to be fine. Uh, but that surprised me actually that these figures at all everything appears to be fine as well. So what you do you come into tools and which brings this screen up. And this is the box here where you put these numbers in. So you press add, 
so you fill the speed in here of we're going to say 200 200 millimeters per second okay so the next one you put in is the line shift offset uh, and in my particular case it's uh, 0 0.07 0.70 OK and press OK um, so then you add the next one Let's see the next one is 400 400 and the line offset the line shift is 0 0.5 Three three zero. Uh, this one here you don't need to change at all. Add another one. In this case, it's six hundred. And here we go for six hundred. It is. 0 0.3770 okay add another one 800 and the next one is 1000 millimeters And the line shift for that is zero point three five five. And we press OK. So I think this sort of rounds the figures up. Um, I'm going to turn this on to enable it. I'm going to press OK. So now we're going to recalculate this. Let's choose another one. Let's choose 600. Just to have a different number, we're going to press OK. And we'll send that to our laser and give it a try, see what the end result is. Okay, so here we go. I'll just do a frame first. Okay. I wonder if you can pick which one has the altered line offset or scanning line offset figures put in which was provided by the engineers of Thunder Laser and I can tell you there is a difference I really didn't see it at first this is the one with the scanning line offsets and if you do look at the others you will see little tiny peaks outside of the line like here and there and here and there where it is strayed over the line we're talking you know a f five thou maybe or zero point one of a millimeter this one is perfect now this would matter in a photograph because it would take it would go slightly blurry um, however slight it would be blurry this ensures that uh, you get a perfect result when you're 
engraving something like a photograph onto either wood or paper or what have you. Well, I don't very often get surprised, but that did surprise me actually. Um, but I think it's a combination of things. I mean, this is only 12 months old. Uh, I've done a fair bit of work with it. Um, probably not as much as if it was a uh, full-time shop machine. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty damn good, I can tell you. Um, that takes a bit of beating. And I was really surprised to see that, and uh, you know, I had to put my reading glasses on to, to see it. Um, and you can only sort of see it close up. That it had done anything at all, but it had. So, yeah, there you go. That is how to check and fill in the scan line offset into Whiteburn. And all these figures are provided by Thunder Laser because they're checked at the factory before they actually leave. Um, and incidentally, this is done with the standard 2 inch lens. Um, what we will actually be using for uh, you know, engraving a photograph is the correct lens and apparatus, and that is the high definition uh, lens and nozzle, which in the next video we will set up and start doing a few engraving tests onto CAD or paper and um, we'll start doing some uh, engraving on things like MDF and uh, Pine to see what sort of um, result we get and we'll also be using the available tools in Lightburn that will do everything necessary for you to get a perfect representation into the material that you want to burn. Uh, you may find it necessary if you want to block out um, you know background sort of uh, stuff that you don't really want in the picture um, you know you, you, you're gonna have to sort of block that out first uh, using programs like uh, GIMP or something like that um, before you bring it into Lightburn and then in Lightburn you can manipulate the photograph the contrast and what have you and I'll show you how to do that in the next video so thank you for joining me and if you've liked the video today please subscribe and if you really like what I'm doing you could consider becoming a patron to the channel because it's the patrons behind the channel that enables me to keep going. And if you don't like what I'm doing, oh, please tell everybody. So, okay. Bye for now.